Hi guys, welcome back. Today I am going to start a new series on OOAB app. It's been a long time since I uploaded a video on YouTube. I've been getting many requests and many comments I've seen on YouTube asking me to make more or upload more videos on YouTube. So here I am and uh, uh, thank you for all the support you've given me for the last couple of years and uh, yeah, please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel because that actually encourages me to upload more videos. So without wasting time, let's get started. Here I'm going to define my class, my first class in the SE38. Okay, so how do I define my class? I'm going to create a class called car. Okay, car is the class which I'm going to create. Okay, so what is a class? A class is nothing but a template based on which you create real-time entities called objects. Okay, a class is nothing but a template. Okay, it's like a skeleton based on which you're going to create real-time entities called objects. So the way you define a class is using class keyword followed by class name okay in this example the class name is car and then followed by definition keyword and then i have to end with end class this is how you define a local class in se38 okay the thing about this class is that you can access this class only in se38 okay the scope of the class lies inside this program now i am going to a class is actually composed of attributes and methods. A class is composed of attributes and methods. You also have events and other other entities but uh, for now to keep things simple I am going to tell you that this is composed of only attributes and methods. Okay. So how do I define attributes and methods for before that we have to define a visibility section for the attributes and methods for now I will keep to keep things simple I'm going to put it under the public section okay this is the visibility for attributes and methods okay so inside the public section I am going to write the data keyword okay with data what I mean is I'm going to enter an attribute of this class. So what is an attribute? An attribute is nothing but the characteristic of a class. So in this case for a car what all characteristics will it have? It can have a name. Okay. Let it be of car 20. It can be of it can have a color and I'll say car, type car 10. And I will also define a fuel type, whether it is diesel or whether it is petrol. Okay, so I am going to define three characteristics for my car. These are called the attributes of a class. Okay, I am going to my define my attributes for the class car. Okay, now this is the scope of this class. Now what I'll do, I'll write the start of selection event. Okay, under this I'll go to create, I'm going to create the object, my object for this class called car. So as I've already told you, class is nothing but a template. Okay, the real time entities are called objects. So I'm going to define my object now. Okay, let my object be car1. So this is how you define an object or a reference variable this is also called a reference variable okay this is how i define it i'm saying car1 is the reference variable which is of type ref to car so this car1 will actually be a type of car like how you define name type car20 for for defining an object what we have to do is we have to make it type ref2 this keyword is required okay 
so the next step would be to actually create object of the car one okay so these two steps are very important when you define the object in line number 18 no memory is allocated but once you create an object with this statement create object statement a memory is allocated for car one object okay so like this i can create n number of objects for my based on my class called car okay i can create n number of objects so this is the actual beauty of a OABAP programming because you can create multiple objects based on a single class called car here in this example okay i'm defining three objects okay so i'll just uh, create the my first object here and what i'll do is i'll try to write okay so in order to access the attributes so what will a car one object have let us see in the debugging session i'll activate the program i'll put a breakpoint on line number 20 x Ex executed so if i observe here in car one variable it's a, as i told you it's a reference variable so once i create the object of car one and if i press f5 what do you see i can see a value is getting a memory is getting allocated for car one so if i go inside what do i see i see all the three attributes which i have defined my, for my car class getting it is also appearing inside the car one object all right so car one is actually having all the attributes which i have defined for the class car okay i have not coded it separately but you can see it is coming up when i'm creating the object i can see all these three attributes inside my car one object also okay so in order to access these attributes of the class okay what i can do is i can write i can say write car1 hyphen greater than symbol name okay this is the this, this is the this is the key which you have to use to access the attribute of the class car1 name i'll say i'll say car1 color and i'll say car1 fuel type i'll activate the program i'll again put the breakpoint execute this so you can see once i execute line number 20 memory gets allocated for the variable and you can see here name is there is nothing in name there is nothing in color and there is nothing in fuel type because what is the data type of this uh, these uh, attributes it's of character so by default it is assigning a space for all these three attributes okay by default whenever i'm creating an object using create object statement a default values are getting assigned to all these three attributes for that object okay because it is character the default uh, the default value of a character data type is space i don't see anything in the output okay suppose if i have also one more i'd say weight or something like that and i if i uh, put it as of type i and then if i try to activate this now line number 20 21 the breakpoint is in f5 now if i go here inside this you can see zero for weight why because it's of type int and for data type int the default value is zero okay i just wanted to show you that so now i'll remove this from here so default values are getting assigned based on the data type when you create an object for the class 
okay so if i need to access the attributes what is what is that i have to write i have to write hyphen followed by greater than symbol and then the attribute name okay so like this for car one i can i can explicitly write the attribute like name as maybe um maruti swift i can say car one color as red i can also say car one fuel type as diesel okay so i can explicitly write it like this activate the program execute it now line number 19 is already executed so there is a value for the default values are getting assigned now i am going to write it explicitly for all these three attributes if you see i'll try to access it here from here okay okay fuel type f5 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 so you can see all the three attributes are getting assigned how did i assign the attribute value for specifically the object i have explicitly specified i am trying to access the attribute of for this specific to this object here and i am assigning a value for that okay so this is how you can assign but here here comes the importance of visibility okay now i have defined these attributes inside the public section of the class so what if i have defined it in the private section what will happen here i'll check the syntax i'll get an error like access to private attribute name is not allowed okay so in this case you can you can you can understand who is trying to access what is what is being accessed in your class from your class so you can have that you you can make the, your class visible to outside or not that is up to you you can define if you want your attributes and methods to be accessible outside of the class okay so in this case when i put it in the private section nobody in no, uh, outsiders cannot access or even outside the scope of this class in case of this local class outside the scope of the class nobody can access this attributes of the class that is what i mean when i uh put this uh, attributes in the private section so even from here nobody can access okay only inside within the class i can access this attributes that is what is called as private section if i put the data in the private section okay so that is why i started with public section because i wanted to keep things simple i don't want to complicate the program so i'll check the pro program now okay so this is one way of creating the objects in creating the objects in overweb app so there is another way from abap 7.4 the way we can uh, create object is very simple you have the inline declaration concept so what i'll do is i'll pro provide data in the brackets i'll say the object name and then equal to new the class name okay this one step is enough for you to create the object of the class okay so this is pretty much easy compared to our old old concept of creating objects uh, you have to define the object then you have to create the object so that takes more lines of code for the, from above 7.4 you can just write one line of code to create the object as well you don't have to create object you don't have to write this statement explicitly now because everything is taken care by this one statement okay they have i think they have taken this concept from java and other programming languages because you can see this is there in uh, java this kind of declaration okay so you don't have to write this create object statement from now on you can directly write everything in one statement <coughs> okay so that is about 
how you can access how i have shown you how you can access the attributes of the class how you can explicitly mention it but now comes the concept of constructors okay so what is a constructor well, how did we define the uh, how did we access the attributes of the class i have tried to access the attributes of the class like this name equal to I have written it like this explicitly. So, in order for you to write many lines of, you if you want if you are defining many objects and if you are defining many um, if you want to uh, put the default values for many of the attributes, you will have to write more lines, more and more lines of code, right? It will take you a lot of time to uh, really write all the um, <coughs> attributes specific to the specific for a object so this will consume a lot of time for you to actually write it like this so what is uh, a new way is you can pass the default values when you're creating the object itself so for that we have to make use of the constructor so in order to define what is a constructor constructor is also a method of the class constructor is the is one of the methods of the class okay so how do i said uh, class is composed of attributes and methods <clears throat> at least for now events and other topics i'll discuss later but how do i define a method here i'll say methods keyword and i'll say constructor okay so constructor is what it is the first method of the class which gets called when you create an object of a class Okay, I'm creating the object. So what I say is, whenever I'm executing this statement, constructor will be the first method that gets triggered. Okay, for that specific to that object. I'll check the syntax. I'll get a syntax error because when you define a method of for a class, it becomes essential for you to implement that method. So how do I do implement this method now? It is using class. So th that means I have to implement the class as a whole. This is how I implement my class class followed by class name and then implementation keyword. Now I'm going to write the method constructor. I'm going to implement the method constructor that is using method and method. Same name. So make sure when you're defining the constructor, the name of the method is constructor itself. The spelling should be constructor itself. You cannot write constructor underscore one and all that. Okay, the name has to be clear that it it is it is referring to a constructor. So this is the method which gets triggered. Is what I say. I'll say constructor getting constructor triggered. Okay. Now I'll check the syntax. Activate the program. I'll execute it. Now you can see constructor is already triggered. Okay, so I didn't I didn't explicitly call the method. Okay, if I have another method called display. Okay, suppose I have another method called display and I'm implementing this here. Okay, what I'll do is I'll put a breakpoint. I'll also write some th code inside it. Check the syntax. Okay, I have to define it using methods. Check the syntax. Activate the program. What I'll do is, I'll put a breakpoint in line number 20 and line number 25 to show you what is getting triggered how, okay? What I told you is that constructor is the first method that gets called when you create the object. So I'm going to line number 31, putting the breakpoint here. So this statement is going to create the object. So the first method that gets called is, I have two methods here, display method and constructor method. So if I press F5 now, the control goes inside the constructor. As I told you, it is the first method that gets called when you create an object of a class. Okay. Whenever you're creating an object, the constructor will get triggered. F5. And the display method won't call get called 
called only why because we have not explicitly called it constructor method gets called implicitly okay you can see here once i execute this statement i am not actually trying to access it explicitly an implicit call is made okay in order to access the display method what i have to do is i have to say car1 hyphen greater than symbol and i have to call the method explicitly like this and i have to provide the brackets also okay this is how i access a method of a class constructor you don't have to call it like this it is taken care when you create the object itself okay now <coughs> if i execute i'll find these two method getting triggered why because i have already written this statement to call the display method execute this the both the methods getting executed okay so what is the real purpose of a constructor is it is used to initialize or provide default values as i've already showed you it is used to provide default values for the object in reference okay what will this object car1 have the car1 will have all these three attributes right so in that case what i'm going to do is i'll provide default values for these attributes specific to that object i'll say name equal to maruti swift I'll say color equal to red. I'll also say fuel type equal to diesel. So this makes a thing simple for you, right? Otherwise, you had to execute many lines of code, and it was it was not looking good in the previous case. But in this case, you can directly define the default values once you create the object only. Okay. This way, I can have car two. I can say Nissan Sunny. I can say it as white, and I can also say it as diesel. So in this way, I have created two objects for, uh, which is pointing to the car class. Two objects, okay. And I am also trying to pass default values for the attributes, okay. Once you pass this, what now I have to do is I have to. say i am importing some value i am importing all these values okay i here i'll say i am underscore name i am underscore color i am underscore fuel type i'll say importing i am underscore name type and make sure this is the same as that of the attributes of the class the type of the data type car20 color type car10 and also fuel type type car10 so i am going to import all these values and i am going to initialize these attributes okay i'll say name equal to i am underscore name this is being provided from here from outside the class okay you can see this is being provided from here so i am going to initialize or provide default values for my object the attributes of my object in reference in this case car1 i'll say i am underscore fuel underscore type equal to i am underscore what is that i'll say fuel underscore type equal to i am underscore fuel underscore type okay in this case from now i can write it as if i want to see what is the what is the name of the car1 i can say car1 underscore name attribute okay because the constructor has initialized the attributes for my object car1 i can directly access it like this i'll say car2 underscore color okay i'm trying to access different attributes of the classes i am underscore color is unknown
i am underscore color is unknown it is saying but i think in the definition i have defined it like this i am underscore color okay let's say i am underscore fuel type type captain check the program activate this <coughs> usually you have to give the same name as of what is uh, in the attribute so that you can keep things simple but for now i not to make things uh, clear for you i have uh, written uh, this this uh, parameter name okay i'll try to explain why i have written it like this and how you can avoid that okay check the syntax activate the program what is car name maruti swift and white i have to get okay maruti swift i'll get and also i'll get white so what i'll do is i'll put a breakpoint line number 33 and i'll tell you how it is working now in the debugging mode if i execute line number 33 what will happen is it will trigger my constructor inside the constructor i'll find maruti swift red and diesel being imported okay so this will set all my attributes of the object see my all my objects attributes got set similarly for this car to the values are getting set okay now i am trying to print car name is what maruti swift and white it is taking from here and this in from the second object white color f8 you can see the output okay so this is how you uh, make use of the constructor we also have a concept of uh, the static constructor which i'll be defining later so this is the uh, constructor which is which which will get called when you create the object okay this is specific for the objects what you create class constructor is another constructor which gets called otherwise also even if you don't create the objects that constructor gets triggered when you access the class okay which i will be discussing about all that later but for now they just imagine that this constructor is getting triggered that when you create the objects okay it is used to provide default values for the attributes okay i have provided default values for my attributes now if i don't want to write the i am underscore name and i am underscore color and i am underscore fuel type i can also write it as name color and fuel type and i have to change all this here i'll say name color fuel type i'll change it here i'll change it here now if i check the syntax i'll get an error message you see that line number 20 earlier i had i am underscore name but when i change it to name based on my uh, parameters okay i'm changing it to name what happens is that it says name cannot be changed it is not able to identify the parameters of the method and the attributes of the class it is having a problem identifying that so in order for us to differentiate between the parameter name method parameter name and the attribute names what i can do here is i'll you make use of the me keyword i'll say me name i'll say me color and i'll say me <coughs> fuel type i'll check the syntax now it becomes syntactically correct why because me keyword is used to refer to the attributes of the class okay so in this case it is referring to this object so i'm saying it is refer to this class attributes not the method or any other uh, parameters okay it is used to refer to current class object or the attributes of the class itself okay i'll put a breakpoint line number 33 so an object uh, i'm going to create an object now f5 object is created i'm saying it is referred to this object not anything else okay me keyword is used to refer to this attribute of this class which in turn becomes the attribute of the object itself Yeah, so that's it. Very well for today. Uh, we have uh, discussed about the constructor concept, the methods, the attributes of the class, 
the new syntax for creating um, an object uh, from a BIP 7.4 you can use this inline declaration to create uh, the objects and uh, yep so stay tuned to, the, tuned to this channel uh, stay tuned to this channel to uh, so that you will get more and more videos in the upcoming days and yeah so please do not forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel that will be very helpful for me and it encourages me as i already told you to upload more videos and in the upcoming classes i'll be enhancing or i'll be extending this uh, program to uh, associate uh, between two uh, classes or something like that i'll, I'll just try to create a different uh, or, or a different program which will be associating two classes and uh, we can see how two classes can interact with each other all right so that's it for today now uh, thank you for watching this um, and um, please uh, wait for the up upcoming uh, sessions thank you all bye bye